Over the years, there have been many different types of analog recording media, from the wax cylinders and wire recordings of the previous century to the use of discs, the predecessors of the classic LP, as a recording medium. But for most of the heyday of analog recording, magnetic tape ruled the roost, evolving from the simple monophonic recorders of the 30s and 40s to stereo, four track, and eventually the multi track machines that were the heart of recording studios from the 60s and 70s all the way through to the digital revolution in the 90s when analog tape finally ceded its throne to the new computer based recording tools and disc based storage media that we all use today. After World War II, Magnetic tape recorder technology obtained from Germany began to take hold as a recording medium in the States. Companies like Ampex began developing commercial tape recorders, and in the hands of pioneers like Les Paul, tape began to realize its potential for quality audio and creative possibilities. Les Paul is generally credited as the father of multi-track recording, utilizing the technique of sound-on-sound -sound recording, overdubbing, a process I'll touch on later, to create multi-layered recordings, eventually graduating to Ampex's earliest 8-track open reel recorder, ushering in the era of true multi-track recording. In the 60s, recorders grew quickly, from stereo to 3-track to 4-track, the combination of a pair of J37 4-track recorders from Studer and sound-on-sound -sound recording techniques allowed the creative producers and engineers at Abbey Road Studios to build up multiple tracks to create the classic Beatles album Sgt. Pepper, a watershed in the art of using the multi-track tape recorder as a creative tool in the studio. Multi-track recorders grew to 8 and 16 tracks, eventually settling on the classic 24-track recorders that dominated the recording world from the 70s on through the next 20 years. Innovations like mechanical synchronization allowed two tape machines to be synced for 48 tracks and more. Classic recorders from companies like Ampex, MCI, and Studer were found in every studio, offering the current state-of-the-art in recording capabilities. Smaller, more consumer-friendly formats, like the TAC-3340 4-track recorder, ushered in the beginnings of the Project Studio revolution, evolving into relatively affordable, small-format 8- and 16-track recorders suitable for personal use that brought professional-quality multi-track recording to the masses. And the listening public embraced analog tape in the form of the compact cassette, which, despite its lower-quality audio, offered a level of convenience too attractive to resist, much like the similarly lo-fi MP3 digital format the public embraced for the same reasons 30 years later. Even long after digital media like the ADAT Digital 8-Track, the early iterations of Pro Tools, and the modern DAW had effectively supplanted analog tape in recording studios and project rooms, the sound of tape, the warm, rich character it imposes on recordings if used well, was, and still is, highly desirable. Some larger studios still utilize analog recorders for certain applications like drum recording and mix down and mastering, while most DAW operators turn to digital emulations of the sound of analog tape to achieve that desirable quality. For those modern recordists who might have the opportunity to work with tape, transfer older recordings into their DAWs, or even to use some of the most full-featured tape emulation plugins, a certain amount of familiarity with at least the basic physics and operation of tape recorders is good knowledge to have. Starting in the next video, I'll begin going over the underlying principles of magnetic tape recording.